Good morning, and welcome to this worship service here at St. Mary's Church in Aylesbury, church at home. So I hope that you are comfortable where you are, and I invite you to join in fully with the singing, with the responses, with the praise, and with the prayers. We're now in the fifth Sunday of Lent. Easter is approaching, and yet we still are preparing ourselves to behold his glory in all of its fullness. Would you please stand as we sing our opening hymn, Lift High the Cross. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a 
reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 5. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for the proclamation of the gospel? The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to Jerusalem to worship at the festival were some <clears throat> excuse me, were some Greeks. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies. It remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, 
not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you join me in welcoming our preacher this morning, Mr. John Bush. John. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Do you believe in coincidences? As I looked at the readings for today, I was left wondering, was it by coincidence or was it by design that led Father Doug to allocate what seemed to me to be three random Sundays on which to preach these last three months? For in the Old Testament readings for these three Sundays, the 24th of January, the 28th of February, and today the 21st of March, there is a common theme, that of the covenant. In January, we had the passage early on in Genesis, where God made his first covenant, a covenant with Noah, that he would never again flood the earth, and cause massive loss of life. In February, we heard of God's second covenant made with Abraham and Sarah, that whatever they and their descendants did, he would always be their God. And today, in our reading from the prophet Jeremiah, we heard about another covenant being made. The history of God in the Old Testament shows God gradually drawing nearer and nearer to his people. At first, God was one among many gods, until the people began to learn that God was unique and different. God called Abraham who responded to him, but Rachel, the wife of Abraham's grandson Jacob, was still worshipping household gods. And 400 years or so later, when God was leading his people out of slavery into e of, in Egypt into the promised land, one of the Ten Commandments given to Moses was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So clearly, the worship of other gods was a problem at the time. At first, God lived apart from his people. He visited some of them, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, from time to time, and spoke with them, but lived apart from them. Then, when the people were in real trouble, living as slaves in Egypt, God told Moses to lead them out of Egypt to the promised land, and God himself promised to go with them to lead the way. God's presence was seen as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, lighting the way for the people. At this time, God dwelt in a tent, the tent of meeting within the sacred Ark of the Covenant, which resided inside the tent of meeting. Here, God would meet with Moses and pass on instructions to Moses. When the people were on the move, the Ark of the Covenant was carried between two poles and was so holy that to touch it meant certain death. It was so amazingly powerful that later in the time of King Saul, the very sight of the Ark of the Covenant filled the mighty Philistines with terror. Although it has to be admitted that the Philistines won the battle 
even despite the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. Eventually, King David decided that a tent wasn't good enough for God and that God should dwell in a house, just like the king dwelt in a house. Accordingly, David made plans to build a temple for God. But God himself stepped in and prevented David from doing so, perhaps realising that a permanent home would imprison God. God told David, I didn't ask you for a house. Instead of you building me a house, I will make you a house which will last forever. God was, of course, referring to David's descendants, the house of David. But there was no barring the progress of science, and eventually King Solomon built a magnificent temple to God's very exact specifications. So it became possible for anyone to visit God's house. And by the time of the birth of Jesus, a visit to the temple in Jerusalem was a required pilgrimage for the devout. So for many centuries, God was living with his people, either moving around with them in their wanderings or dwelling in God's temple. But things still weren't right between God and his chosen people. Despite all God's promises and the covenants between God and human beings, they continued to sin and to stray from God's path. Despite the laws and commandments given to them via Moses to help them live godly lives, they continued to ignore the guidelines and to do exactly as they pleased, so ruining their own lives and each other's lives. God then sent them a number of prophets to try to recall the people to the right path. And one of these promise, prophets was Jeremiah. Like all the prophets, he spent much of his time haranguing the people to convince them of their sin, but in response was treated appallingly by them, suffering several terms in prison. But it was through Jeremiah that God came even closer to his people. God said, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the very least of them to the greatest, says the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. For the first time in history, anyone would be able to access God's law, for it would be written on all their hearts. No longer would people need to be instructed by others who were specially trained. They would simply be able to find truth deep within themselves. So, this covenant with the people, through Jeremiah, marks a turning point in the history of God's relationship with his people. Of course, that isn't the end of the story. Although human beings now had God's law within themselves, they continued to ignore it. But God never gave up on his people. 800 years later, God himself came amongst his people as a human being, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus showed the amazing lives people could lead 
if they listened to and responded to God's laws within them. And later, God himself came to dwell within every human being via his Holy Spirit. God is now so close to us that he is part of us. We can involve God in every thought and action we take. Jesus has shown us how to maximise the effect of God within. The rest is up to us. Will you now please stand as we join together in proclaiming our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Standing. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated as we offer our prayers and intercessions unto Almighty God. Everlasting God, your Son chose twelve disciples to work together to spread the good news of the gospel to the whole world. Help us as we work together at St Mary's for the common good. May we delight in sharing in each other's spiritual gifts and enabling everyone to make their own contribution, however small. May we always be ready to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for peace in our world. May all lands that suffer violence and injustice find peace and reconciliation. We pray for the peoples of the world, all and all who offer their services in the leadership of the affairs of the world, that they may uphold what is right and good. We pray particularly at this time for your love and compassion to abound us as we walk through this challenging time of the global pandemic. We ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions about the coronavirus with possible widespread consequences. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for all those who help our community to run smoothly because of their jobs, voluntary work or neighbourliness. Help us to be supportive and encouraging and to step into situations where we can serve. Bless our neighbours and strengthen those who are working in your name in order to bring healing and comfort to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, Jesus healed the lame with a touch and raised the dead with a word. Hear our prayers today for those who are laid low by sorrow and illness or by fear and weakness. 
Breathe new life into them as we name them before you now. Valerie, Helen, Julian, Tina, Peter Atkinson, Sonra, Sally, Jack, Kim, Joe, Sarah, Michael, Karen, Freya, Kirsty, Terry, Francis and Freya, Colin and Mark, Doris, Julian and Dan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you that our movement towards death and decay is not the final sentence in our life story. We thank you that by your faithfulness we are born to a new and living hope in a future where love will never be terminated and life will never end. May we always trust in you as we pray for those who have departed this earthly life. We pray for Joe Winkles, Josephine Mittman, and we pray for Helen and the Mittman family. And we pray for Anne Day. We pray for her family and many friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we go forth from this time of worship, help us to remember that you do infinitely more for us than we can ask or imagine. Hear, hear our prayers for all your creation and gather in us the embrace of your abundant and life-giving spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us now offer our spirits to God Almighty in peace and to our brothers and sisters here on earth, making use of the chat or of the comments below, or just being that sign of peace to your neighbors. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise. Thank you. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It shall become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. 
as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence. Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her faith, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. And bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Will you join me now in making your act of spiritual communion? Praying with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat by faith and feed on him in your heart with joy. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you. I invite you now to contemplate this mystery as you enjoy our amazing choir. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. 
Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. And we all say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As we celebrate this fifth Sunday in Lent, this would be the beginning of Passion Tide, meaning that not this week, but next week will be Holy Week. And so we now begin our journey walking with Jesus, even unto Jerusalem. We have now placed in the church for those of you who are willing and able to come, or if you know somebody that is, uh, to collect palm crosses. Uh, there is a number of those there uh, for people to collect and to use next Sunday, which is Palm Sunday. Uh, you'll note that we'll go from purple to red uh, during that Passion Tide. So uh, there are also some resources available through the email that was sent this past Friday uh, on how to make a palm cross. Uh, I will try and resurrect some instructions on how to use paper to make a cross. Uh, so again, as we gather closer to Easter, take note of the depth of Christ's passion for you. As we approach Easter, um, not tomorrow, but on Tuesday, uh, we will be emailing out invitations to attend Easter Day services in St. Mary's. As you will understand, these tickets will be limited. There will be 35 available seats and we'll have five people who are going to be assisting the whole process, helping everybody to come in, be socially distant, sanitize our hands, uh, and observe the one way through the church building. Uh, it will be a delight to gather, and we want to make sure that we do that in a still safe way. Um, so if you are not currently receiving weekly emails from St. Mary's, that would be for one of two reasons. Either we do not have your email address that you can provide rather easily, or we do not have your email address with the consent to hold that information according to the GDPR regulations. So if you would like to be on our email list, please call the office at the number listed below or email to administrator at aylesburystmarys.org.uk uh, and you will be on our email list so you can keep up with all that is going on uh, and you will be able to receive the invitations to respond to so that your name will be put on a list to come to services. Um, so Easter Day, we will have two services an 8 o'clock and a 10 o'clock. They will be the identical service. We'll do it twice. It will not be the 1662 at 8 o'clock. It will be Easter Day, the service of resurrection. So 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock on Easter Day, the 4th of April. Um, again, this is, we're going to very carefully, intentionally, and uh, with hope, begin to gather again in this manner. Um, if you're not feeling well, please don't come. 
some of the things going on during this same time. Uh, we are winding up our, our restoration phase one, the, uh, the windows around the Clara story, the upper windows that let the light in the top of the building, uh, have been signed off. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, we will, they're just doing a little bit more tidying up and we'll start to see the scaffolding coming down. Uh, this week we should start, start to see the work inside of the chancel, uh, preparing for the stained glass windows of the chancel, the life, earthly life and ministry of Jesus series of windows that make their way around the choir uh, in this in the chancel. So very exciting times. Um, and also we are endeavoring to re-illuminate the tower. Um, many of you are familiar with the tower having been lit uh, with thanks to the council for, from many years ago who put uh, great big floodlights on the roof for us. Uh, on a timer. So we're going to use much of the same wiring and much of the same, um, the timer and everything that will remain the same. Uh, we're going to update and upgrade the light fittings. So we'll go to LED, which will be much cooler and much more energy efficient. Um, hopefully we will have the funds to make that happen. Uh, so we're, we're looking for that to happen very quickly, perhaps even this very week. I'm just very excited about all of the Holy Week coming and the possibility of opening up. We won't open up before Easter, but it looks like moving forward from there, we may start to open up again for worship in a limited sense. Unlimited worship from our hearts, but in limited numbers. Enough notices. The Lord be with you and also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Reina. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>